friends, Jerry Rosa here, the Rosa String Works Workshop with another new project to get started on. I'm going to delegate this project to Caleb, but I thought I'd tell you a little bit of the story about this. This came to me from an elderly gentleman in Rolla, Missouri. In fact, he called me and I was on my way into Rolla at the time. This was several months ago, by the way. And anyway, I was on my way back into Rolla and when he called me and I said, well, you know what, I'm headed in there. If you don't care, I'll just stop in at your house and I'll take a look. Well, he gave me this and he gave me an old mandolin to fix up. And I don't recall how old the gentleman is, but I think he told me he was in his late 80s, maybe early 90s. I can't remember. And these were childhood instruments of his and he wanted them fixed. This one's in really rough shape. I should have started this video when it still had the strings on it. These were really old, old, old strings. You can kind of tell by the... Uh, buttons on the ends of the strings. Look at the way they're made. It's kind of like a uh, clamped piece of lead, something like that that's clamped onto the end. Now these were nylon strings, which is good because the tension on this. This little guitar is sagged in underneath here. There's braces loose on the inside. He's got some training aid stuff glued to the front there or taped onto the front. And uh, so we don't want to destroy any of that. We want to keep the look more or less and just make it playable again is basically what we want to do. I can't remember his exact story as it was months ago when he told me, but I believe he told me he loaned this to someone and when he got it back, that person had cut slots in the peg head and made it a classical guitar. Why you would do that, I have no idea. Now, I think that's what he told me. It could have been... So I may be confusing stories with someone else. It's possible that it was already a classical and he didn't like that and he just decided to convert it to a regular. Either way, you can tell that's been done. You know, you can see the holes in the side there for the classical and you can see the slots in the peg head. So that's all been done. I'm not going to mess with any of that if we can avoid it. The nut came off of it here. <laughs> you can see the nut. I think the nut is very funny because the nut is cut on both sides. You can see they're interchangeable. <laughs> you should be able to be happy with that because if you don't like it this way, just turn it over. <laughs> I guess you'd call this kind of a saddle bridge uh, combined and it's got slots and then the uh, strings would ride on the little, it looks like a little brass saddle there is what it looks like. I'll show you that up close. Then it's got the little metal tail piece. I don't think the camera's going to focus on that label on the inside, but maybe we can get it to do that if we get the light just right, and that's almost impossible. Anyway, you can see that label on the inside. It's in pretty bad shape. It says Handy Guitar Tuning Chart, and it looks like there's tuning for Spanish regular playing, tuning for Hawaiian steel playing, and then there's a note there that says if you use a pitch pipe, be sure to tune all strings one octave lower than tones given out by the pitch pipe, I think. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's kind of cute. Uh, you know, I, we're, I think this guitar is roughly from the 30s, uh, is just an approximate guess. Um, but anyway, it's a pretty cool little guitar. Um, you know, just a family little heirloom thing that I'm sure he could hand down to whoever. You can see the back is in bad shape there. The back is loose in several places. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to go about this. Um, neck angle, surprisingly, is not horrible. If I'm exaggerating, it's like this versus down the other way. But it's not real bad. So maybe if we get the um, internal bracing and all that fixed, maybe it'll be playable the way it is without having to do any kind of a neck reset. The neck joint itself actually does look just a tiny bit loose. You can see someone has taken a disc sander to the back of it at some point in time to sand it, and it has been refinished on the back. Possibly the sides have been refinished. Possibly, I don't think the tops have been refinished because it's got the original thing. The sides look almost original, but the back has definitely been dealt with quite a bit, actually. Yeah, you can pretty much see the sanding marks and everything in the back. So I know the gentleman will be really happy if we can fix this thing up and get it where it's playable for him. So Caleb, you got your work cut out for you. We definitely want to be very careful with this so that we don't destroy the look of it. We just want to get it back into some sort of playable structural condition. Here we go.
So on this old Harmony guitar, we've decided the first thing we're going to do is take the back off, which shouldn't be too big of a problem. You can see it's already kind of loose there, and it's really loose there. There's spots all the way around. It's just that there's so many loose braces inside, we're going to have such an easier time fixing them if we can get the back off. So I've got my tool warming up, and I'm going to take it and just start working my way around. And if I make some good progress, I'll bring you back to show it. So I got the back off. You can see there's all sorts of stuff in here. We got mud dauber nests and some dust and very dirty. But uh, on the back, I've been working on re-gluing the labels down. I've been doing that with a paintbrush to get underneath. Kind of press it down. And if I need to hold it down, I'll just put this little block on it. It'll hold down pretty well. So, even trying to keep the labels, I think what I'm going to do next is start working on getting these back braces glued back down. I'll decide how we're going to do that, and I'll bring you back to show you. Re-gluing the braces on the back of the guitar, I started using Jerry's homemade Go Bar. So you get the glue underneath the brace, and then put in these strips. And you gotta bend them to make them fit, but that helps put pressure down. Kinda can't see on the camera, but there's a top piece that these bars are pressing against, and that helps push it down. You can see, I got lots of squeeze out on this. So it's pressing it down pretty good. Because of the warp in the back, I took one of the long ones, and it's actually pressing the back down flat. Another one of the long ones is on the end of the brace, keep it all flat, because without the one on the, on the actual back, it still had a little bit of wave to it. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna get to doing all the other braces. Well, it's all clamped up. I got all the braces glued back down, and they're clamped up to the top. There's a couple places on the, on the top part where I had to put spacers, because our clamps really weren't long enough, but everything's pressed down real well. Also, another thing, we noticed there was just a little bit of movement in the bottom. The solution Jerry thought of was to put some wedges underneath here, and so we've just wedged them in, so now there's no movement in here. So this is nice and pressed down, and it's not gonna move. While this is clamped down, I'm gonna take, clean up some of the glue so that when it's time to glue it back on, we should have a nice clean surface to glue onto. While I was waiting for the back to dry, I started cleaning out the top of the guitar, and I got this back piece out. It came out fairly easily. There was not very much holding it in, and then Jerry came over, and he got the other three braces out. They really didn't put up much of a fight. The old hide glue just basically wanting to give up. I'm gonna clean up the front of this guitar, get all this glue and leftover stuff off of here. Then I'm gonna clean up the bottom of the braces so we'll have nice clean surfaces to glue to when I'm ready to glue them back together. So as you can see, I've got the front of the guitar in now. Getting ready to glue the braces back into it. But on the front, we've done something a little different. We've actually wedged in these sticks here so that the front is flat because it really had all sorts of shape to it before. This way, when we glue the braces in, we glue them in on the flat surface and hopefully they'll help keep the flat surface. The other nice thing about doing the top compared to the back is that they're all the way off, so it makes it a little easier to get glue on both surfaces. So I can glue this and the top and then stick it. So I just got this guitar unclamped. I'm not sure if you had seen it before, but the top was dished in. It was really bad because of all the loose braces and the way the cracks came, it just dished in. But now it's sitting really flat. I mean really flat compared to where it was. The thing I'm doing now is there's a little bit of glue that kind of squeezed out through the cracks and you can feel it. So I'm trying to clean that up before I move on just so I got it cleaned up. So now that I got the top cleaned up, I'm getting ready to glue my cleats in. You can see they're dry fit right now and they cover up all the cracks that run the, pretty much the whole distance of the guitar. They are a little wide for cleats, but seeing as this guitar is more over a sentimental guitar rather than a musical instrument, we weren't too worried about affecting the sound. So I'm going to glue these in pretty much the same way I glued the braces in. I'm going to use the go bar system and get them all clamped in. While I was waiting for the glue to dry on the cleats, I went ahead and took the tuners off. You can see 
on this one is that we've got one flat headed screw, one Phillips head screw, and one that's totally missing the gear. I've got this side that has all the parts, but this side needs a little bit of work. So I'm gonna look, see if I can't find some pieces we have around here that'll match. So I found some parts, but we decided that one of the sides was pretty much unsalvageable. One of the tuners was bent so bad we couldn't get it back and we were missing parts. We found another set that matched so closely, you really can't tell. You probably couldn't tell which ones were original and which one wasn't. I'm gonna put the other ones on and we, we cleaned them up on the wire brush so they pretty much match. There'd be no way of telling which was original unless you knew. So I'm gonna start putting these back in the guitar. So I've got my cleats glued in and I beveled the sides so they fit well. If you notice, this one up here is thinner than the others because the serial number's up here and we didn't wanna cover that up. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take some filler and fill in these little cracks on the top and then we'll dye them and you'll never know they were there. So I thought I'd show you the filler I used is water soluble so I can just clean it up with a damp towel and just like that, the only white we're left with is in the crack. I can fold her up, dry her off, there you go, cracks are filled. I am almost ready to glue the back back on. But before I do that, before I start putting glue down, there's a couple spots on the top where it's loose. Like right in there, and there's a spot on the other side. Right in there. So what I'm gonna do first, is I'm gonna get some glue in here, and then I will put the glue on the back, and then the clamps that will hold the back on will also clamp down the top. So I'll save a little bit of time not having to clamp them individually. And as you can see, I'm spreading glue on the back. As soon as I get done spreading glue, I'm going to clamp up the back, but I'm only gonna clamp it up till about here, so as far as I've got glue, and because if I just do the rest without paying attention, I could end up changing the neck angle. So what I'm gonna do is get it clamped up to here and then turn it over and check the neck angle. Because if I'm not careful, where I glue the back will change. You can see it kind of moves. <laughs> I'm not gonna tighten these first two down very well. I'm just gonna get them on there so I can make sure the back is well lined up. So on this old guitar, the neck angle wasn't quite right the way it was, and that was perfectly lining up the back. So when it came in, I don't know if you remember, but Jerry talked about the neck angle wasn't quite right. So what we've done at this point, you might be able to see up in here, you can see right there, we've actually cut out a little piece of the front of the back. That's because we've pulled the neck up and effectively we've set the neck angle to be correct. So because we've pulled this up, I've clamped this part first. There's already glue in here and now I'll work my way from the back up to it. All right, I got all the clamps on, the back's all clamped up and I checked the angle and we still clear the saddle. So we should be good to let this dry. I got this old Harmony guitar out of the clamps and because of the way we glued the back on to get the neck angle right, we've got a little overhang of the back. I've been working on this side, you can kind of see it's pretty close. And on this side, you can definitely see the lip. And the way I've been taking this off, for the bulk of it, I've been using the finger planes to get a lot more of it off. And then when it comes time for detail, like where I am on this side, I've been taking the chisel and very carefully knocking off what I gotta do. I've got here to do and a little bit on the sides. Well, I just finished up putting the die on and if you couldn't tell, it's all across here. It blends in pretty well. You can hardly tell we even touched it. I dyed this in through the side and the top too. Used to be have filler in them, now they're dyed. You can barely tell they're there. They look no different from the rest of the scratches the guitar's picked up. So the next thing I'm gonna do is start working on the frets. The 12th fret here is a little tall and there's some wear up at the top. There's just a little wear in these frets. So I don't want to take too much off of these seeing as how small they are and they're probably original. We don't want to mess up the numbers. So I'm just going to very lightly take my file to this, try to knock out some of the wear in the fret and some of the highness in the fret down here. 
I'm gonna recrown them. The next thing to do will be start working on the nut slot. Something else about this fretboard. Jerry did look at it and make sure we were nice and level. We were really not too far off. This does not need all that much work. So I really have not been filing that hard on it. Something else I've done while I'm filing is the fretboard has shrunk a fair amount in the 80 years it's been on this guitar. So I've been kind of running along the side trying to knock off where the frets are sticking out the side of the board. It's much worse on the bass side, so it's not big of a deal on the bass side. But you really don't want them sticking out. And grabbing your hand. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna put a little bit of a bevel on the frets. So not run it flat, and I run it like this. Just kind of start to take the corners off. I think that's pretty good. Most of what I can do now is with the crowning file. I'll just start at one end and work my way. And I'm not gonna film all of this, but you see what I'm doing. I'll finish it up and maybe show you where I am. So I know you didn't see it rocking before, but before I started, if I put a straight edge down here, it would rock. But now, put the straight edge down here, it doesn't move at all. So we're nice and flat now. Well, level. I've already crowned them and I've rounded off the corners. One of the next things I need to do is actually get some of these file marks out of these frets. So I'm gonna get some higher grip sandpaper and some sticky notes, because I don't want to really just start going at it with the sandpaper, because I'll tear up the numbers. And we're trying to keep this the way the customer had it. So I'll put some sticky notes down between the frets so I can get into the frets without tearing up the board. So rather than do one grit all the way across the board and then the next grit all the way across the board, since I have to move the sticky notes every fret, I'm just gonna do four, six, and then 1200 on this fret, then move the sticky note and then do four, six, 12, and then so on. Should save me some time having to do the board a couple times. I've got my 400 and for the 400 it's just a rough, basically. All I'm trying to do is get it prepped for the six. That's probably good. The 1200 is the one I'm kind of pushing the most on because it's going to take off the least and do the most polishing. I've knocked pretty much all the file marks out of there and it's much smoother. It'll play much nicer. I'm going to continue to do this. You see I move the sticky notes down, protect the board. I'm going to continue to do this for the rest of the board and then we'll figure out what I'm going to do for the nut. As I've just finished up the frets, I was thinking how far you go on high grit is kind of a personal preference. You could go as high as you like. I only went to 1200 because I'm trying to get this done as time efficiently as possible. On to the next thing, I've started kind of cleaning out where the nut is gonna go. I've done that a couple of ways. I've taken the chisel and I've kind of worked into it. I've also kind of used the chisel as a scraper. I've also used this razor blade as a scraper. So something I'm not so sure about is this is the nut that came with it and it's cut on both sides. I'm not exactly sure why. So I'm not sure if we're going to use this on the guitar again or if we'll make a new one. I'm gonna have to talk to Jerry and see what he says about it. Regardless, I am going to finish cleaning out the slot, then I'll go talk to Jerry. So in between here, I've gone and I've cleaned up this tailpiece. I took it to the wire brush and took off a lot of that gross color. What I'm gonna do now is put a couple coats of this Renaissance wax on here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of it and I'll wipe it on and then I'm gonna put some pressure on here and buff it out. And this should do two things. One, it'll make it look pretty good. And two, it'll keep it from getting kind of rusty again. Good and shiny. Also, I found two matching screws that I'm going to use instead of the two different screws that were in it. This way they match and they look very similar to the one that looked original, so you'd probably never know. So what we decided to do was just make a new nut and I've got it pretty well shaped. I'm getting ready to glue it in. It fits really well this way and I'll do all the string slots once it's on and we can put some strings on it. So I'm gonna be using this canopy glue. It doesn't take very much to glue a nut on. We'll let this set up. So I've been carving out the nut spots for the strings and I've been using these new files that Jerry bought. There's three files and they're double-sided and actually they cut pretty well. The only problem I've been having is they're smaller than the Stumac files. I noticed it when I 
had cut this low E string slot that the E string didn't quite fit in it. And when I actually got it out and measured these new files, the sixth string, the low E string, only comes to about 40, so 40 four thousandths, whereas the Stumac, it even says on it, it's 56. That's what it says. So either I gotta shake it some more, or I'm gonna have to get the Stumac ones out and cut with them. Let's see, this E string is 52. This low E string is 52, and if this only measures it 44, this might work for an electric set, but it doesn't really work for the acoustic at least. But anyways, I'm getting the nut carved out. So far, I still got quite a bit of height on it, so I've been taking some off. I think I'm gonna cut out the holes and see where I'm at. So while we were setting up the string height in the action, we decided the bridge was actually too low. So what we did to fix that was we glued this thin strip of maple on. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna dye the whole thing black, not just the strip, but the bridge, so that it'll all match. Then I can put it back on the guitar and it should be just about finished. So that's what it looks like, all black. I think we decided that this bridge has been shaved down some point in its life, so by us adding this strip, we're probably just putting it back where it was when it came out of the factory. Looks pretty good, all one color. I don't think you'll notice once it's on the guitar. And I think it's time to put it on. Now the last thing this old harmony needed was an end pin. We picked out a black one to match the tuning keys. It's all set up to play, and I'm gonna play it. So this is the mandolin that came in with the little Harmony Supertone. This is a Harmony Monterey, Monterey. I've already done quite a bit to it. It used to have a lot of raw wood showing. It's been dyed black and I put some boiled linseed oil on there. It kind of almost has the same shininess the rest of the finish has. I've already lightly touched the frets with the file and recrowned them. The biggest problem this guitar had was in the bridge. You can see it here. This whole section was broken off and what I did to fix that was I took what used to be this piece, glued it on there, cut this off, filed it all down to match, and then dyed the whole thing black. You can hardly tell there's an add-on, especially once it's on the mandolin. So the biggest problem now is the action is still too high at the bridge. So what we're doing is I've got the foot piece to the bridge saddle and I'm gonna take some off. You can see the pencil lines. I'm gonna take this to the spindle sander, but the problem is it doesn't sit flat on either side. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna clamp it to this block in the center where I know it's flat kind of like this, where it'll sit flat, and then I can run the sides and know that it will be flat on this plane. So there it is. I've got the bottom part carved down enough that you could play it pretty well. Speaking of play it, uh, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Let you hear how it sounds. I'm definitely no mandolin picker. Friends, as this was the first project that Caleb has completed for a customer, I thought I would just give you a quick summary of what I think has taken place here on these two instruments. First of all, on the guitar, I think Caleb did an excellent job. We've got good action on it. He's worked on the nut. He cleaned it up and cleaned up the tailpiece, made it look real nice. and 
I think overall did a real fine job on this. He had the back off of this one. While the back was off of it, we did what I call my cheater's neck reset, and we bent the neck to the shape it needed to be to make it play good, and as you can see, the action's nice and low there. You can just see across the guitar. Probably never been like that since it was built. So overall, it's a good little guitar, and uh, it actually has a halfway decent sound for a, for a toy guitar. really. So I think Caleb did a really, really nice job on the guitar. On the mandolin, I'll be truthful with you and tell you that uh, it was a much, much more challenging setup. It truly was a very difficult setup. We're dealing with a neck that has just got an underbow like you can't believe, number one, and number two, there's no truss rod. And so, you know, how do you fix that? Well, you know, if you want to spend a ton of money and a ton of time on a relatively inexpensive instrument, could have fixed it. You know, we could have taken the fretboard off, put a truss rod in it or whatever, and did all that extreme work. But we were trying to fix it on a budget, try to help this customer out. As I mentioned, an elderly fellow, he was in World War II, he's a veteran. So I really want to take care of him, but on the other hand, I want to make sure I don't over overcharge him, if you will, for he just wants them playable. And uh, so we've got a pretty darn good action on that as well, but it just took a ton more work. And to be perfectly honest, honest with you off camera I took over on this one and finished it up. I cut the bridge down a lot more, filed through all the craziness on the fretboard. In general Caleb did a nice job it's just that he you know this one was just a lot more challenging and I mean like seriously maybe the hardest setup I've done in in years honestly it really was. It was very difficult. It's up in uh, decent shape now too and it's playable and everything's in good shape. So there you have it. I think he did a great job. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all so much for watching.